Almost done computing the business logic for the reverse eye game. My name is Professor Don Patterson, and we're in the middle of a tutorial of creating a web application version of Othello. In this video, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're correctly calculating when the game is over and who has won. We already have tokens that are being flipped. We have messages flowing back and forth. We have a pretty nice layout at this point. So let's go ahead and do that. All that calculation is going to be done on the server side. If you'll recall from previous videos, the server currently identifies that the game is over simply by when the board is full. Since in Othello, it's possible that there are no more legal moves, the game may end sooner. And you can see even from the way that I say that, that if we are clever about looking at our legal moves data, we can identify when the game has won earlier. Let's, let's do that. So we're gonna open up Visual Studio Code and go to server.js. And we're going to go to send game update. Because um, that's when we're going to identify uh, whether or not our game is, has been um, completed. Uh, I didn't actually go there. I want to go to where it's defined. OK, here we are. Uh, scroll on down here and get to the game update. And here it is. Here is the section of the code that's current that we currently have that's checking whether or not the game is over. It's impoverished. It's not checking whether there's no more legal moves. It's check, just checking whether or not there's the the game board is full. So let's alter this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change what we're counting here. So that we're not just counting spots on the board that are open but we're going to count how many legal moves are left. And to reflect that, we're going to change the name of our variable. And although we were keeping track of how many tokens were on our board of color white and of color black on client side, we're also going to do that now on server side because the server is doing its own calculation, not for the purposes of displaying the information, but for the purposes of calculating who won. So we'll create a white sum variable and set that equal to zero initially. And we'll also do a black sum variable and set that equal to zero initially. After updating our game up here with the appropriate play that um, is has been done, uh, we are going to then go through our board and we're going to evaluate whether or not our, how many legal moves we have. And to do that, instead of looking at games game ID board, we're going to look at games game ID legal underscore moves. So also look at the row in the column. And we'll do a not double equal to space. Uh, right, if it's not equal to double space, that means there is a legal move. And so we will say legal move plus plus. My goal is not to have any bugs. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that, uh, that not equal or equal carefully. All right, so our legal count will be up, will be increased. Now we'll take that same code, those three lines, and copy it. And we'll go back and move this back to board from legal moves. Probably should have done that before I did this. And if it is equal to W, for example, we'll say white sum plus plus. We'll copy those three lines, paste them down here. And if it's equal to black, we'll increase black sum. All right, so now what that's doing is that's giving us the data that we need in order to make our decision. Down here, when we asked if count was equal to 64, we're evaluating whether the board was full. So instead of evaluating whether the board was full, we're going to ask whether legal moves equals zero, meaning there's no more moves left. And if that's the case, then we're going to announce that the game is over and someone has won. We need to determine who's won. And we're going to do that with a helper string here said called winner. And we will initialize that to the case where it's a tie game. Now, we can have a tie game on Othello if no one can play and there's an equal number of tokens on the board. We'll assume that it's a tie game. But if white sum is greater than black sum, that means that white has actually won and we'll reset winner to be equal to white. On the other hand, we'll copy those three lines and we'll reverse it and say if white sum is less than black sum, then the winner was black. Winner now contains a description of who won. And so rather than sending back the phrase that everyone has won, we're going to send back the text winner. Save that up. And I believe that's everything we need in order to calculate who the correct winner is. So let's run our server and see if we have any syntax errors that prevent it from running. And then we'll do a little sequence to see if it works. OK, there's our server running. 
go back here and we'll see if we can get our players into a game. Right one, I don't see any errors in the console from the browser tab. Everything loads up okay. I don't see any errors in my the output of my server. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through a simple game and I will speed it up a little bit so you don't have to watch it. And then we will um, see if it correctly identifies the winner. And it looks like we got a good game. Game over, black one, and we can return to the lobby. Okay, I think that does it for calculating game over. At this point, we've got a fully functioning reverse eye game. We're gonna do one more video to clean up some loose ends, and then we're gonna call it a wrap for this web application. Thank you for your attention.